The recent proliferation of availability of retro full-face motorcycle helmets can of course be traced to the fact there are simply more brands building bikes and the associated gear that really hark back to this classic retro part of the motorcycle market. But for me, there's something else and just something more simple that really comes into play. From the moment that I started riding a motorcycle, I went round the shops and on all the shelves, I was only faced with really helmets that were race replicas or bore some resemblance to that, overcomplicated, fussy designs that for me were not representative of what I wanted to be doing as a rider. I wanted something just clean, something neutral, something timeless and just classic in design. Not not pigeonholed in the past, but certainly not something cutting edge and with massive vents and wings all over it. So there may be a lot of you out there like that as well, and this is where we are at now. We have a wonderful selection of these helmets as more and more manufacturers realize that you can have this lovely style that is timeless, but you can incorporate technical spec too. And now more than ever, we have some really advanced features to show you in this range too. So coming out with the top five, always gonna be controversial because we do have so many to choose from. So we're gonna take you through what we believe to be the top five for 2020, and we're going to tell you the reasons why. So kicking things off, we have the Biltwell Gringo S here. This comes in at $189.99. This is a cracking helmet because this in a way just is a very simplified version of what we're after in this segment in terms of specifically the looks. So this doesn't sacrifice on safety by virtue of being an ECE approved helmet. This is an update to the previously only DOT, that is to say the American standard. That was a previously approved version. But for a couple of years now, we have had this ECE variant and it's still wonderfully slim, sleek, and really it's no frills. You do get things like quite a simple visor, but it is still injection molded, so it's quality. It has an anti-fog element to it, but it's just very comfortable, very good looking, very stylish, and very reasonably priced at that $189.99 starting point in the plain colors. So a wonderful helmet worth looking out. It also comes in a simple gringo variant, so without the S on the end, and that can be accessorized with goggles, peaks, visors, and so on, depending on your preference of riding style or what you want to use the helmet for. Moving along to number two, we have the Bell Bullet Helmet. This is probably the most famous helmet in this segment. Bell were actually the first company with their Bell Star helmet back in the 70s to make a full face motorcycle helmet. And this bears a lot of the resemblance to that original Bell Star. This has now been around for a good five years or so at least, and we are the main dealer in the UK for Bell, working very closely with them in the designs for the new collection and also bringing you exclusive sale offers as well. So we really do have a lot of experience with this wonderful helmet. And it's, as you see, it's got this massive aperture at the front, which makes it really nice to ride in. It's genuinely practical from that point of view, but it's still obviously safe with EC approval, and it has some lovely ventilation features going on with it as well. So you have these five vents across the top, and you have this lovely Venturi exit vent on the back, which is a really clever way of creating a draft by virtue of creating a back pressure here, which draws the air through the helmet, keeping you cool and keeping the airflow going. The other way you would do it would be to simply drill a hole and put a cap over it, which creates a weak spot and it's just not as nice as creating something that is fundamentally incorporated in the overall shape of the shell. So it's really neat. You have lovely machined metal parts for the side pods, all giving it this premium feature to it. And it's just wonderfully finished and being Bell, the fit is always really good and true to size too. Since this has been out, it has become really the sort of target point for other retro full face helmets to aspire to, certainly in terms of volumes of sales. And as a result, a bit like a James Blunt single in the charts back in the day, it's just exceeded a point really where people can get away with it without slagging it off. And there have been a lot of people with things to say about the bullet. And in large part, I don't think people realize that there have been revisions to it since it was first bought out, particularly regarding the fit and the EPS liner and so on. So this has made it far more comfortable. It is not the most quiet and it certainly doesn't have the best seal when it comes to the visor itself because this is probably, I would say, the most single-mindedly retro in the way that it pursues the aesthetics, but it still has some really nice features to it. You get a Magnafusion magnetic little clip on the side, and it's just a very comfortable, nice removable inner liner. So there's really a lot going for it. Coming in at 389 as a starting point in the 2020 colorways, we do, however, have some amazing offers on at up to 40% off if you go over to Urban Rider in the bullet as well from previous seasons colorway. So there's usually some kind of deal to be snuffed out somewhere on our website with this wonderful helmet. But it's a really cracking item and it remains really, I think, the most standout retro full face that there is. 
Moving along, if you stick with Bell for a minute, we have the Bruiser. This is a helmet that has actually yet to be released. It's going to be released in a couple of days' time, but by the time the video launches, probably will have been. This is a helmet that is not as single-mindedly retro, of course, as this, which was based on the original Star, but this is something that I think works really well in our segment. Again, it eschews that sort of race replica look that a lot of the other brands still go for with their street helmets. And this takes on something just a little bit more different. It does look a little bit more aggressive, perhaps with this white periphery to the colorway we have here. But in the plain colors, I do think it still would work well on a more classic bike, uh, as I do think it lends itself. But the main thing about this helmet is it comes in at a reasonable price point, sub 200 pounds, and that's in any of the different colorways. It also comes with a couple of different visors, and it also has the ability to modulate between being an open face and a full face, and it's road legal in both configurations. So this is a really wonderful thing. This makes it a really versatile helmet in a way that none of the others are. These are just full face. And for me, whenever I've seen a modular helmet in the past, it's always been something of a concession in whichever variant you have it. Whether it was a full face, it just wouldn't look that nice and it would be very heavy. And if it was an open face, it would look massive and just really unsightly. Whereas I do really think this achieves wonderful points on both of those configurations. In the full face, I think it's striking. I think it looks great. Perhaps it's a little bit aggressive with a bit of attitude, but I don't think it's too much. It's not too over the top in that respect. It has some lovely features to it. It's very well put together. It is still really quite lightweight. So all of the four helmets here, one, two, one, two, three, four, all weigh exactly the same in a medium at 1400 grams. The only one that weighs less is the helmet we're about to get onto, which is very, very lightweight indeed. But so really, this is quite remarkable given that it houses these extra mechanisms to turn it from a full face into something that can be an open face really quite easily by virtue of these two hinges on the bottom. It just opens out, the visor comes off, and as you can see, you then have a open face helmet, which is nice and easy to operate. You can simply take this along for the ride with you. Perhaps if you're out on a hotter day and you want to go with an open face configuration you can but then you don't have to worry if it would start raining for example you can just pop that back on very easily lots of other features by the way on all of the helmets that we're going through and you can check out the dedicated video reviews on each and every one of them and that will take you into far more detail for each helmet so we're just giving you some of the highlights here but if you do have any questions equally we will happily address them in the comment section below moving along then to the showy glamster so this is also a helmet that is due for release later in 2020 so like the bruiser not quite out yet but this is really exciting for us because Shoei as a brand probably have the most technical know-how and the most universal respect for their technical prowess. And traditionally, a lot of their helmets have been far more of that race variety. And it's only in recent years they started gradually trying to get involved in this part of the market. And it's fantastic that they really have. They've fully taken the plunge here with the Glamster, which is just a beautifully executed helmet. But compared to the others, it has the highest amount of technical spec. There's no other way of saying it. It does come in there for a slightly higher price. So this is 399 in plain colors, 499 in the graphic colors. But this is a very, very high quality shell. This is Shoei's AIM shell, which is a mixture of carbon and composite fibers and organic fibers. It's a five layer system, which they use in most of their top of the range helmets to create something really strong and really lightweight. And you can hopefully see if I just line them all up in the same configuration, you should be able to get a rough idea of the relative size of each of them as well. This one comes in at 1100 grams in the medium as opposed to 1400 in the rest of them. So this really is astonishingly lightweight. In fact, I would wager that it's pretty much the most compact, most lightweight full face helmet out on the market of any variety. And if there is another one that trumps it, it's only gonna be by a matter of a few grams. It's simply not possible to get much lighter than this one is. So they're all, I would say, relatively compact with the showy just being on sort of a different level altogether on that in that respect. It still remains nice and quiet to ride in, and I think it just looks absolutely fantastic. It's going to obviously have a couple of different options for visors as well if you want to go down that route with the usual kind of showy plain colors coming in initially on release. So the main striking points about this are the fact that it has these horizontal grids for the vent system either side on the chin bar. This gives it this aesthetic look to it, but it still has lots of lovely modern spec features such as this pinlock system visor, which is just the best way of securing an anti-fog effect. 
The only other one is the most expensive one in this range and it really does make a big difference. If you're riding day to day and you need a helmet that just doesn't concede in any way to those sort of more dedicated, perhaps slightly less classic and sumptuously good looking street helmets, this one really doesn't concede any ground at all. It's fantastic in all respects. I love the way it looks and for me it's retro enough but it doesn't go over the top so that it's still going to have quite a universal appeal to people I think in a variety of different riding situations tastes as well and I just love it I'm so looking forward to this helmet coming out having ridden with it it's every bit as comfortable it's every bit as quiet as something that they did before like the RYD which was I thought quite a quiet helmet um, so I would think that it pretty much lacks for nothing you get a fantastic quality of visor seal which is one of the other things that sometimes people level at some of the other helmets I'm looking more at the Gringo and the Bell Bullets perhaps not having quite such a great seal around the visor which means that a bit more sound a bit more air gets in but of course water on a really wet day and for that reason, it tends to be the case that people who ride all through the year, if they own one of these, they have a backup, they have an alternate helmet. This one does absolutely everything to my mind and I'm just very, very excited to see this come out to the market. So any other comments on this, as I said, the video being released very shortly as well. So much more information there on that one about safety features and so on that make it so good uh, as a helmet. Then moving on finally, we have the Head and Heroin Racer. So this has also been out for a couple of years now, but this is at the top of the price tree out of the ones that we have here. So starting at the sort of 180s, all the way up to 629 pounds in the plain colors, which is a lot of money for anything, let alone a motorcycle helmet. But Head and really do justify this. There is a wonderful degree of craftsmanship when it comes to the helmet. I could bore you a lot now, but if you're interested in why this is so expensive, you have to watch the full video review that I did on this because there's just so many minute details to talk about. But there's this lovely trimmed calf skin around the exterior on this particular one, which is beautifully crafted, um, lovely and soft, and actually creates quite a surprisingly good seal when it comes to the visor. The visor itself is injection molded, but it also has angles to fit neatly around this so that it can incorporate very, very seamlessly a pin lock insert again so that you don't get the fogging similarly to what I said about the showy helmet but here in an even more overtly retro package. This is I think the absolute quintessential retro helmet. If you had to just design the perfect one I think it would look very very similar to what Hedden have achieved here with the Heroin Racer. It's a very comfortable fit as well and it's a very high quality shell. You have these beautiful machine parts on the side. All the hardware will be matching depending on which color you have. So that's everything from the vent systems to the badge on top to even the little double D ring on the bottom, whether it's brass, gun metal, or whether it's the silver like we have here. It's just a real amazing effort in attention to detail and creating the absolute most refined piece of gear that we can and of course that's not at a price point everyone's going to be comfortable with but it is wonderful to see brands pushing the boundaries when it comes to achieving the very best quality that they can so really there's something for everybody in terms of the price in terms of the aesthetics and bear in mind this is as i said just a very small sample of all the different retro full face helmets that there are. If it's not included in this range, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it at all. And this is simply a selection to show you to whet your appetite. If you would like to know more, head over to urbanrider.co.uk and check out the rest of the range there. And do subscribe to our channel to be the first to find out about the world's finest riding gear. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye.